In this video, we look at a simplified summary of the story California Gold, The Hows, The Wares, and The Whys by Matthew Thornton, which appeared in the August 1973 issue of the magazine Long John Latham's True Treasure. I am certain that for the ordinary weekend gold prospector, there comes a moment when he grows dissatisfied with his own hunting grounds and daydreams of packing up his belongings, leaving everything behind, and embarking on a journey to the enchanting, nugget-filled wonderland of California. He yearns to make a significant strike in the historically abundant and romantically captivating foothills of the Great Mother Lode. However, for the average individual living halfway across the country, this may appear to be an arduous and seemingly impossible expedition, one that must promise a bountiful return of gold to make the entire endeavor worthwhile. Rest assured, my dear reader, that such a feat is indeed achievable. Despite the contrary tales you may have heard about the 49ers depleting all the gold back in the 1800s, the truth of the matter is that you will need to possess a level of astuteness surpassing that of the 49ers themselves, who possessed scant knowledge of the peculiar geological conditions that so astonishingly enriched the western foothills of the Sierra Nevada. The primary objective of this discourse is to acquaint you, the aspiring prospector, with these geological phenomena and the specific regions where your chances of returning home with a sack brimming with gold are most promising. Let us commence by perusing a map of California. As our eyes scan its contours, two principal features shall boldly emerge above all others, the Mojave Desert and the Sierra Nevada mountain range, stretching from the northern reaches of Mount Lassen to a point approximately 70 miles north of Los Angeles in the south. It is this area upon which we shall focus our attention, although it must be acknowledged that every conceivable locale within the state possesses some measure of gold content. Merely a few years prior, a vein of viable gold ore was discovered in a populated hillside canyon in none other than Beverly Hills. However, let us redirect our gaze towards the Sierra Nevada, particularly the central and northern portions, commencing from a point just southwest of Mariposa in the Central Range and extending to the vicinity of Quincy in the far north. Within this expanse lies the crucial gold-bearing districts, where the opulent veins of gold quartz were uncovered, as well as the stranded beds of ancient rivers that flowed long before the advent of humankind. Fear not, for we shall bestow upon these venerable waterways the attention they deserve in due course. In the magical realm of gold prospecting, the mother lode weaves its enchanting tale. Stretching for 120 miles, this fault zone in the Earth's crust was infused with gold and quartz during the Jurassic period creating a treasure-filled wonder. But hark! The mother lode is not a singular vein, but a collection of parallel systems, each with its own riches. The crown jewel, one mile wide, spans from Mariposa to Georgetown, sparkling with golden quartz veins. Once, the rivers danced with gold near the Sierra streams, a boon for the 49ers. Alas, the rivers now lay tamed by California's flood control project, hidden beneath hundreds of feet of water. Yet hope flickers in the reservoir's wake and a few miles downstream. But beware, dear seeker, for State 49, the great highway follows the course of the mother lode, leaving the panning spots devoid of fortune. To strike gold's gleaming embrace, one must tread a different path. The suction dredge, a miraculous device, unveils rich gravel from river bottoms, a sluice box's delight. For those earnest in their quest, this investment may repay in seconds, unveiling the golden secret. But heed my words, newcomers, for without such dredges, grand bonanzas remain elusive. The professionals, the scuba teams of the Sierras, venture into the most treacherous canyons, laden with equipment and camping gear, unearthing fortune through their steadfast dedication. So brace yourself, dreamer, for the journey is arduous, but the rewards, oh, how they glitter. Once upon a time in the mystical land of California, a tale of ancient rivers begins. Non-dredgers, heed this advice. Venture downstream from the revered crossings of the Mother Lode River, where the currents converge with the reservoirs. Seek out the Merced, the Tuolum, the Stanislaus, Calaveras, Mokolumne, and Kosumnes rivers, for there lies your initial prospecting grounds. Gaining experience in these waters shall prepare you for the next chapter of our study, 
the golden tertiary river channels. But as with any enchanting story, we must embark on a journey that unveils the past, allowing us to grasp the present fully. Picture, if you will, a time machine nestled within a wondrous helicopter, capable of traversing the strands of time. Together, we shall venture backward to an era known as the Eocene, a logical epoch within the Cenozoic era, the era of new life. Five preceding epochs, including the Paleocene and Pliocene, collectively form the Tertiary, from which our channels derive their name. As we step into this magnificent contraption, setting the controls for a distant era, we are transported back to a time before the Americas were discovered, before pyramids reached for the heavens. We find ourselves 58 million years in the past, where the grandeur of the Sierra Nevada is but a humble range of low foothills. Our time machine hovers, suspended in this primordial moment. Gazing upon the desolate landscape, our eyes witness the majestic rivers meandering through vast valleys, nestled between the undulating hills. In the distance, these rivers converge, cascading into one another until they unite as a mighty force, pouring into an expansive inland sea. Little do we know that this very space shall later transform into the bountiful Central Valley of California, a testament to the passage of time and the ever-changing tapestry of nature's creation. If we were to set foot upon the ancient soil of Eocene, California, we would be met with a climate almost unbearable, a stifling atmosphere heavy with moisture and rich in oxygen far beyond what we know in our present time. Though invisible to our eyes, this oxygen-rich air holds within it the erosion of the magnificent veins of gold quartz that grace the foothills, and with the relentless downpour of torrential rains. The newly eroded gold is carried by the flowing rivers, sinking to the depths where it seems lost for all eternity. But fear not, for it is not lost. Now let us venture further in time to the epoch of the Tertiary, specifically the Pliocene. A peculiar sight awaits us, as rivers of molten rock, unlike any volcanic eruption we have witnessed, surge forth from the distant north, from a place that will one day be known as Mount Lassen National Park. From our vantage point, we witness the rivers we once knew vanishing before our very eyes, consumed by the relentless advance of the fiery lava. As the molten rock meets the riverbanks, billowing clouds of steam surround us, causing turbulence our pilot struggles to navigate. Progressing deeper into the Pliocene era, we find this phenomenon persisting as more and more rivers succumb to the fiery embrace until not a single waterway remains in the ancestral Sierra Nevada. Instead, all that stretches as far as the eye can see is an expanse of cooling lava, an ocean of hardened magma. Yet amidst this cataclysmic transformation, something remarkable unfolds. For nature's whimsy reigns, and rain begins to fall upon this newly sculpted Pliocene landscape. As we are well aware, rain seeks its own path, following the course of least resistance. And in this altered terrain, it forms new rivers, carving fresh channels where the old ones once flowed before the lava's embrace. Let us depart from this gloomy era and venture back to the year 1973, where the rivers we witnessed taking shape now carve deep canyons, slicing through the ancient beds they once occupied during the Eocene, in the very paths where the new rivers intersect their former channels. All the precious gold that once lay within those beds is now concentrated in the sand and gravel bars of these fresh waterways. It was on a cold January morning in the year 1848 that this revelation came to light. For nearly four years, from 1848 to around 1852, the hills poured forth an incessant flow of gold. It was abundant, scattered across the bars of sand and gravel, even strewn upon the very surface of the earth. And those who ventured to explore the crossing points of the tertiary channels with the present-day rivers may still find remnants of this fortune. But beware, for to make a significant strike, one would require the aid of a dredge. Although I cannot present you with an actual depiction of a tertiary channel intersected by a river, I can offer you a cross-section of an imagined channel, akin to one of the ancestral Yuba River beds. Observe the illustration, and you shall find that a tertiary channel comprises three distinct layers, the upper gravel, pale and glistening like fresh snow, 
often referred to as the bench gravel, the intermediate red gravel, and the most prosperous stratum of all, the deep blue gravel, often known as the blue lead amongst miners. Each of these gravel layers possesses a trace of gold, but it is the blue layer that conceals the ultimate treasure. This is because the blue section represents the very bedrock of the tertiary channel. As the gold flakes were dislodged from the veins of the Eocene and carried by the currents into the rivers, the larger fragments descended to the depths, accumulating within crevices and potholes of the bedrock. As a result of this ancient sorting process, numerous drift mines that delved into the blue layers of various channels unearthed nuggets of unimaginable proportions. One such mine near the former town of Allegheny unearthed several six-inch nuggets, yet not in the year 1848, but rather in the year 1938. In the mystical realm of Eocene, California, where the rivers meander through ancient tertiary channels, a secret lies hidden. Not all rivers have pierced through their ancient counterparts, but it is within the deep canyons, plunging over a thousand feet, that the ancient beds have been fully exposed. It is here that the rivers have set free the coveted treasure, the gold concealed within the fabled blue gravel layers. I am privileged to possess the knowledge of these sacred locations, yet the quest to find them is no easy feat. Though marked on a map, locating these channels in the vast wilderness is an entirely different challenge. You might believe that stumbling upon a crossing and delving into the blue gravel lair would bring you instant riches. And indeed, it may be true if you are fortunate enough to find one. But as you venture into the river canyons, where towering trees and thick pine needles cloak the slopes, the search for the elusive channels becomes more arduous than anticipated. There have been times when, unbeknownst to me, I have stood right beneath the richest crossing, oblivious to its presence. However, if you possess the approximate location and ascend the canyon from a mile downstream, the area where your pan yields scant gold is where I would start hacking my way up the canyon walls, seeking the hidden channel. It may demand toil, but if fortune favors you and you chance upon an untapped trove of blue gravel, yes, they do exist, believe it or not, you may find yourself free from the shackles of Monday morning labor. In my endeavor to aid you on your prosperous prospecting voyage, I shall divulge the precise spots, river by river, to commence your pursuit of nugget-filled dreams. Be forewarned, these locations lie in virgin lands, devoid of roads and scarce in trails. Yet it is assumed that if you seek great wealth, you are willing to toil and labor in the pursuit of golden splendor. Let us venture forth to the heart of the mother load and commence our journey northward, beginning at the Tuolumna River. As we embark on this quest for fortune, it is wise to bypass the Merced River, for it lacks a significant tertiary channel and is far too accessible for the serious prospector to consider. The Tuolumne River, however, presents two crossings by the tertiary Tuolumne River. The first crossing lies approximately 51 2 miles east of Chinese camp, while the second awaits us roughly two miles upstream from the Lake Lloyd Road crossing bridge. Of the two, I recommend the first crossing, as it poses more challenges in terms of accessibility. Moreover, the South Fork of the Tuolumne also intersects with this same channel, a mere mile upstream from its convergence with the main Tuolumne River. Now let our gaze shift to the mighty Stanislaus River, where the tertiary Calaveras River graces its path about 33 quarters miles northwest of Vallecito. This particular area calls for moderate effort to access. Take note, for this channel intertwines with certain creeks that flow into the south fork of the Stanislaus, each deserving our meticulous attention. Furthermore, the rich cataract channel crosses both the north and middle forks of the Stanislaus, just upstream from the point where these two forks merge. Be warned, dear seekers of gold, for this region proves exceedingly challenging to reach. Alas, the Calaveras River, in terms of channel crossings, finds itself somewhat deprived, with only two to its name. One of these crossings lies beneath the New Hogan Reservoir, rendering it inaccessible. However, the North Fork of the Calaveras reveals promising areas, where gold from a channel in the headwaters near Railroad Flat can be found. Yet do not rely solely on this location, as the river is dammed just upstream from that point, causing its flow to fluctuate throughout the year. 
Downstream from the crossing, however, the river flows perennially, making it a worthwhile area to explore. Behold, the Mokalumni River, adorned with several channel crossings, though their surroundings lack isolation. The tertiary Calaveras River intersects the main fork approximately 11-2 miles northwest of the town of Mokalumni Hill, coinciding with the crossing of State 49. Although this particular spot does not garner high praise, venturing downstream for a few miles to the point where the river cascades into the back of the Parde Reservoir can yield fruitful results. Additionally, the south and middle forks of the Mokalumna experience their own crossings, with the South Fork near the diminutive hamlet of Independence and the Middle Fork close to Wilseyville. Armed with this knowledge, we embark on a perilous and awe-inspiring expedition through the rivers of Eocene, California, in pursuit of the gleaming treasures hidden within their ancient beds. May fortune favor the bold, and may the rivers of gold guide our path. The Consumnes River boasts numerous crossings, although none are located on its main fork. In a bustling region, a branch of the tertiary Mokalumne River crosses the South Fork roughly two miles southeast of River Pines. This very channel proceeds to traverse the Middle Fork, approximately one mile northwest of Indian Diggings and the North Fork, about two miles south of Baltic Peak. These final two areas warrant special attention due to their isolation and the exceptional richness of the channel they offer. Now, let us journey to the birthplace of it all, the mother lode, where the tale commenced on a fateful morning in Coloma. Situated on the south fork of the American River, this little town witnessed the gold rush unfold in 1848. Today, the American River and its forks remain among the most abundant gold streams in the entire state. The 49ers barely scratched the surface of their gold potential. The south fork of the American River harbors incredibly secluded spots some of which hold immense promise for those equipped with large dredges capable of plunging 30 feet or more. However, these areas are so isolated that even the average prospector armed with a simple sluice can expect handsome returns. The first crossing on the Middle Fork lies approximately 2.5 miles southeast of Michigan Bluff. Another branch of the same channel intersects near Duncan Creek, where it converges with the Middle Fork. Additionally, a branch-off channel crosses the region where the French Meadows Reservoir stands today. It is worth directing your attention to areas a few miles below the initial two crossings due to the extreme difficulty in accessing the Middle Fork. The North Fork presents only one viable channel crossing in an isolated locale located about one mile north of Iowa Hill. However, the entire stretch of the North Fork, extending for miles upstream, exudes a beautifully primitive allure and poses significant challenges for entry. Any chosen spot within this region promises great potential for prosperity. Moving away from the forks of the American River, we encounter the Bear River. From this point onwards, the tertiary channels played host to the infamous hydraulic mines that polluted California's rivers in the previous century. Bear River is crossed by a branch of the tertiary Yuba River just west of Dutch Flat, the site of one of the huge hydraulic pits. The entire Bear River in this area is all very easy to get into, and it is advised you skip it completely. Should you desire gold from this river, however, there is an extremely rugged stretch, believe it or not, directly downstream from where State 49 crosses. This area should have some very nice gold, even though it is not replenished each year due to the large number of dams upstream from this point. Now, we arrive at the Yuba River and its forks, the creators of some of the largest gold nuggets discovered anywhere in the state, or anywhere else for that matter. Most of these were found in the North Fork, up in the Downeyville and Sierra City areas, and even today a number of large nuggets are found in these spots each year after the heavy spring floodwaters pour out from the many rich tributary creeks. The South Fork of the Yuba is the place every beginning gold miner seems to head for first, and with good reason. It is continually supplied with gold from three channel crossings, one about a quarter mile upstream from State 49, another about 1.5 miles upstream from Edwards Crossing, and the best channel of all, the one crossing 2.5 miles southwest of Washington. The two previous channels are in pretty rugged country, and a trip to either of these spots is usually profitable. 
The Middle Fork also has its good areas, these being about one mile northeast of Badger Hill Diggings and at a point approximately 1.5 miles west of Gold Canyon. The latter location is where the fabulously rich forest channel crosses the Middle Yuba. Drift mines on this channel were turning out six-inch nuggets as late as the 1930s. The North Fork has only one significant channel crossing, but I wouldn't recommend it because it is right under State 49. The real gold in the North Yuba comes down from creeks such as the Canyon, Slate, Goodyears, Rock, Empire, Lavazola, and Pauley, as well as the Downey River. I recommend you bypass the North Yuba altogether and start hiking up one or more of these creeks during your stay in this area. Most people who do never are sorry. Leaving the Yubas behind, we venture towards the final Grand River system in the Sierras, known as the Feather River and its untamed forks. The vast Lake Oroville, created by the impressive Oroville Dam, has submerged many promising spots along the North Fork, West Branch, and Middle and South Forks. This ambitious project aims to transport the river's waters over 500 miles southward to parched Southern California. However, despite the dam's dominance, there remain numerous unexplored areas, particularly in the treacherous Middle Fork. The South Fork encounters a tertiary channel in its upper reaches at the Feather Fork Mine. Just downstream from this crossing, the river plunges beneath the depths of the Little Grass Valley Reservoir. Yet, a significant expanse of pristine wilderness awaits downstream from the reservoir, teeming with gold that was swept down from the channel prior to the reservoir's construction. Delving into the North Fork can prove chaotic and is best avoided, as a heavily trafficked highway runs parallel to the river for almost 40 miles. Even without this hindrance, the river has been so extensively dammed that the gold reserves have not had the opportunity to replenish themselves. The west branch of the Feather River boasts the discovery of California's largest gold nugget, the renowned Magalia Nugget. Unearthed near Sawmill Peak during the early days of the gold rush, it weighed an astonishing 54 troy pounds. Oh, the thrill of stumbling upon such a treasure in the depths of your pan. It likely originated from the rich Megalia Channel, which seems to have intersected the humble West Fork of the West Branch. Alas, this entire region is rapidly being populated, and I was taken aback by the sight of sprawling subdivisions emerging on the ridges overlooking the West Branch. Lastly, the Middle Fork, a realm of unfathomable wilderness and ruggedness, harbors pockets along its banks that likely haven't seen miners since the 1930s. During those desperate times, when families struggled to survive, men scoured every gold-bearing stream in the Sierras. For them, the pursuit of gold was infinitely preferable to enduring the deprivations of a soup line. If one possesses the fortitude of body and spirit, alongside the appropriate accoutrements, an expedition into the middle fork of the Feather River might just be the key to unlocking prosperity for years to come. However, one must proceed with utmost caution. Becoming disoriented, sustaining injuries, or encountering rainfall whilst ensconced within the depths of the canyon could spell a precarious fate. The canyon walls boast a precipitous slope of approximately 50 degrees, plunging precipitously to the river's edge without a trace of beach or shore within the gorge. When the heavens open, one must either cling to stakes driven into the canyon walls or succumb to the treacherous waters. Yet do not allow the previous passage to deter your adventurous spirit. This is one of the rare locales within the Sierras that necessitates such extreme vigilance. For most other rivers are adorned with sandy havens on either side, offering respite should the waters surge. Nevertheless, whether traversing a grand river canyon or meandering along a modest creek in the Sierras, always be mindful of a potential escape route in the event a tempestuous rainstorm materializes, looming ominously on the horizon unbeknownst to you. And of course, do not neglect to carry your trusty compass and snakebite kit. Whilst you venture within the river canyon, Keep an astute gaze for fragments of reddish, cement-like rock adorned with embedded white quartz pebbles. These remnants are indeed vestiges of the tertiary channels, signifying that you tread upon the correct path. And thus, my dear friends, there you have it. I fervently hope this compendium of knowledge shall prove invaluable in your pursuit of gold, as it stands as the most reliable and factual information I could assemble for this noble purpose. Although I cannot guarantee your ascent to opulence, 
I can confidently assert that should you embark upon a few miles of arduous trekking, labor assiduously, and remain vigilant for the conditions I have delineated, you are all but certain to unearth a measure of that fabled gold that has long stirred your reveries. In parting, I proffer three additional sentiments. Fortune favor you, exercise prudent care, and above all, may your hunt be fruitful. If you're interested in purchasing a copy of this vintage magazine for yourself or as a gift for a friend or loved one, please click the link in the description.